my friends and welcome to the second of my build videos of my new Tamiya Saint Dragon. We're going to be starting parts bag B but it was such a big bag that I think I'm going to be chopping it up into at least two videos maybe even three because it's it looks like we're almost at a rolling chassis by the end of this so uh, yeah we've got shocks to build and everything in this uh, bag anyway let's get on to it and start with step 12 which is um, making up the rear axles and we've got two nice blue parts D1 we've got the axles themselves and the carriers and then these uh, screw pins along with four bull races so it's a fairly simple task we grab an axle pop a bearing on and then pop it through like that I believe yeah that's all right and then pop that through nice tight fit this one for an half an hour there we go and just to potentially stop the bearing falling out until you uh, install the dog bone I stick an R-clip through I have no idea where these come from but these are massive R-clips <laughs> um, but hey anyway and then you need to check uh, the guide for the orientation of these wishbones these are the lower wishbones or A arms as other people call them so this is the left I think yep yeah. <laughs> and oh, it's a simple case of pushing that to upright axle carrier whatever they're calling it through and popping your screw pin in and then tightening it up and not too tight because this is fairly flexible plastic so it's fairly easy to strip the thread if you over tighten this one and that's your left side done and same again for the right side so I'll be back for part 13 shortly. Step 13 is installing or attaching the rear upper arms and the output shafts for the differentials. So I've already started as you can see with D2. So the other one should go in there with a screw pin again and you tighten that up um, now you will need a dog bone yep yeah, I've done that one and I'm checking I don't see a reason that these have to go in the way that it shows you but it's telling me so I'm going to do it so that one goes in there and this one goes in this side some point there we go and then you need a black o-ring pop it in like so and then get your dog bone and just press it down all the way to the end and that should stay in and there's step 13 complete step 14 looks to be fairly simple however we've got these 2 mil e-clips which are my nemesis on camera so I've prepped everything we've got uh, what they're calling a link pin and we need one of these e-clips and as you can see that 
bleeding small that I can't even see when I got it in my hand. Hooray! Right, so that's how easy it is. <laughs> and then you just repeat for the other side with this massive long uh, screw pin. So again, check the orientation. And this is easier said than done. Oh, there we go. Ink and ink. And then you screw that in. And again, you get this link pin, pop it through. And pop it through and put the e-clip on. And I'm not doing that one on camera. So, again moving on step 15 is installing the rear guard which is this thing here uh, i've already screwed it together it's parts b13 and 14 along with the rear damper stay or damper mount so it should just be a simple case if I can sort this out of popping that on there like so if you can see there's three holes there so they line up with these 12 mil self tappers like that. and then we have the rear guard and the top pushes in to those gaps there with a screw machine screw through and a flanged nut and then the bottom mount is a 36 mil machine screw or engineering screw and a second flange nut and once again we need to tighten them up steps 16 17 and 18 are making up the rear dampers and i've already started because again the nemesis of my videoing are these eclipse so uh I decided I'd do them before starting so that's the piston rod done the next step is to insert these two o-rings and it shows there applying a bit of the oil first uh, but I've never found that to work uh, so I'm trying a bit of grease now this grease is <coughs> to me very similar to uh, Tamiya's anti-wear grease. I got it with uh, a Koyosho kit. Can't remember which one. Um, however, I'm I'm just trying it. I don't know if it will work or not. But I thought I'd give it a go, seeing as I've got a bit left. So we pop them in there. Put a bit of this grease all over it, like that, and then partially screw the cap on, but not all the way. And then we take the piston rod, and again it says to oil that, but because I've got this grease on it, uh, I don't think I'm going to bother. And then we pull that through. It says there we go and then we can tighten that up a bit ready for the next step which is popping a spacer on and then the bottom ball connector mount and it screws up fairly easily so I'm just going to be quite careful and only pinch the very bottom of the piston rod 
just to tighten it up like so and then we are basically ready for step 17 which is filling it up with oil so I've no idea there are people that say you should screw the top on with the piston rod virtually all the way up and others that's and Tammy estates it should be right at the bottom um, but what you should do is once you've filled it up a bit is move the piston rod up and down a few times just to get any air out from beneath the piston itself and then we can top it up a bit and then we need to leave it for the air bubbles to dissipate so as you can see I've got it on this stand here and I can still see loads in the one I prepared earlier so uh, I think it's time for a coffee once all the air bubbles have cleared we can carry on and we need a red oil seal Ooh. I nearly forgot something to hopefully soak up some of the oil because uh, it will spill out like so all over my finger and then we can get the lid and we can screw that on and then clean up any excess oil and then what I tend to do is tighten both the top and bottom cap and once again and then we just need the spring and then the spring holder and there we have one shock and then part of step 18 if we move this up a bit is showing you you can uh, attach some preload to the shock springs if you want we've got a thick one medium and a thin one um, but at the minute I mean that doesn't feel too bad to me so uh, I don't think I'll put any on until uh, I finish the car and see how it goes so I'll get on and finish the other one and uh, come back for step 19 okay the last part of this video step 19 is attaching the rear shocks so we take the shock and we've got these BB12s which they're calling damper collars and then we've got a 25mm machine screw and it pops through the top there with a flanged nut so in fact it's a 25mm machined bolt not a screw and then it's just the same for the bottom and we go into the outermost hole now you see that oops 
I missed that. Part D3. Okay, so here we go. D3. Great big blue spacer. And that goes through like that. Still quite a long thread sticking out, but hey. So, one side done. I'll crack on with the other side and once again join you in a bit and here we have one gearbox with the rear suspension and drivetrain attached and working and yeah I'm feeling this and um, I don't think I'm going to be putting any pretension on it so with that I think I'm calling it there I hope you've enjoyed watching and uh, look forward to seeing you on the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye.